I grew up in Melbourne, in Australia, and I went to the standard state school that everyone went to and followed by the local high school. And I was always good at art at school. Um, I liked it. it was, art was fun. Drawing was fun. So I kind of assumed I'd become an artist. I, I thought that would be, that's where my talents were taking me. Uh, I didn't quite know what that meant, but it was the only thing at school I was good at. Both my folks were, had art in their professions. Dad was an engineer. Mum used to colour black and white photographs. So we were in a household where art wasn't foreign. You know, they were like there were sporty households and musical households. You know, the, the drawings that Dad did as a kid were kicking around and there were always sheets of paper. So it was a pretty natural thing for us to, as kids to do. And Dad was always sticking, you know, cartoons up on the kitchen cabinets. So that, that got me uh, looking at those. And then I, I suppose teachers were, noticed that my love of drawing was, was turning into a um, proficiency at drawing that possibly some of the other kids didn't have. I'm not sure if I noticed myself, apart from eventually them, the kids, saying, oh, Martin Brown's good at drawing. And, and then that, that becomes your thing. You know, he's the sporty one, he's the musical one, he's the arty one. Teachers College helped me in a couple of ways. Firstly, it taught me some technique because in schools, your ambitions often outstrip your abilities. You want to paint, you want to draw, but you just don't know how because no one teaches you. you know, there, are, there are so many techniques to painting with uh, watercolours or oils that you, it's hard to teach in the you know, confines of a high school art department. So that was wonderful. Uh, the, the drawing, the painting, the jewellery making, pottery. And also that progression into becoming a teacher, which was hard work. And it showed me a lot about working with children and what I really wanted to do. Uh, because I very nearly failed sixth form art, the equivalent of A-level here. I'd always got A for every year that I'd ever done art at school. So I knew I would get A again. So I did practically no work whatsoever and very nearly failed. Uh, and I would have gone on to graphic design because I thought that's where I wanted to go, but I didn't really know. But I ended up going to teacher's college because that's what I could do with the grades I had. But what that helped me do was grow up. My first professional gig as an illustrator was a tiny cartoon in an editorial piece for one of those London freebies, one of those magazines that were handed out at tube stations many years ago. And I was proud as punch. It was, a, you know, I had been printed before. I'd done cartoons in the college newspaper and for uh, as... Um, favours for you know, local church groups and things and I, I doodled for the odd publication here and there but not never paid but this is my first commission as a, as a, as a cartoonist and uh, I just thought it was the best thing in the world. I started working on books relatively early because there wasn't quite enough work in magazines and greetings cards to keep the wolf from the door. So I needed to branch out. So I started knocking on more doors uh, and they were publisher's doors. So the first books I ever did were humorous books for adults. And that was fun. That was great fun because you, you, you had a, a theme and you rather than doing a one-off gag, you had pages and pages of, of character development and, and stories you could run with. And once I'd done a few of those, I, would, I broadened my, you know, my palette even further and I started knocking on the doors of children's 
publishers and they saw what I'd done with the adult books and that's what pretty much got me the, the job for the coping with books.